you soon. You've been listening to a Morris Media production. Today's Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is show number 526. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to bring you dental office sedation options, when to pick one over the other and what's the best choice for you. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And please go to my office Facebook page and like us. If you do so, I would appreciate it very much. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com and we're streaming live on Facebook, so I'll just wave to that camera. And so thank you so much for joining. and. Uh, uh, bef also, before we get started, if you are a dentist or you know of a dentist with at least three years' experience, I'm looking for an associate. So please call me or send me an email, 614-262-9588, or you can send the email to drkavitko at drkavitko.com, or you can send it to, oh, I'll probably throw out another email address later, too. Okay, so as I mentioned, oh, and also, in about 10 minutes, we're going to give away free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They're going to be delivered to your place of business on Tuesday afternoon. And so I'm telling you that. For those of you that just tuned in or have never listened, I want you to know about this contest. It's very easy to win, and, uh, but this will give you a chance to pre-program the phone number into your phone, 614-459-9769. You can pre-program that now. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are going to cover dental office sedation options, um, which one to pick and which the best choice for you. Of course, uh, let me just mention there are four categories. Primarily three, but I've seen it uh, split into a fourth. So one would be laughing gas or nitrous oxide oxygen. Another would be oral sedation by itself, where you swallow a tablet or two and it makes you sleepy. And then a fourth category, which I'm gonna probably keep it into three categories, but a fourth category in some folks' mind is when you mix the two, laughing gas with oral sedation. And then another one would be intravenous sedation, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, we're gonna talk about laughing gas, oral sedation, and intravenous sedation, those three. And that'll be important if you're trying to win the flowers later, so remember that. Okay, so we're gonna start with laughing gas and uh, or nitrous oxide oxygen sedation, okay? So nitrous oxide oxygen uh, sedation. I always throw the oxygen in there because what we're doing is we're mixing nitrous oxide, which is N2O, with oxygen. And we always have questions like, is it safe? So the answer is yes, because when we do nitrous oxide oxygen sedation, our devices limit us to giving you no less than 30% oxygen. Now that's important because room air has somewhere in the neighborhood of 19 to 22% oxygen. So we are always giving you more oxygen than you would get if you're just hanging around breathing. But it's the other 70% that is different than if you're just hanging around breathing, okay? So it is very safe. And in fact, even on someone with cystic fibrosis, you know, that affects their lungs, the nitrous oxide tends to soothe the bronchioles. And so those people can even have nitrous oxide oxygen sedation. Okay, so now nitrous oxide is a simple gas, when inhaled, causes rapid analgesia or pain relief, euphoria, mild sedation, and sometimes psychedelic disassociation. It's been used in dentistry since the mid-1800s, and of course it was used recreationally since 1700s, and I guess apparently still today, 
Uh, it's called, they're called whippets. It's what you use or what the manufacturers use for whipped cream, you know, to make it come out of the can. And uh, people figured out that they can somehow, you know, inhale that on their own. Also, it can be used to uh, make a car go faster. So what's interesting about nitrous oxide is you can buy it you can buy it at places. You can't, it's not just something you have to get at the dental office. The problem is, is if, you, if somebody sells you a canister of nitrous oxide, they can't also sell you a method of inhaling it. You, you know, that part's illegal. So anyway, I only know it as being used for, for uh, dentistry, and it's great. Now let me just tell you, when I was first introduced to it, just a kid, probably 14, my father had switched dentist to a dentist that was right out of dental school. And so he was up on the more modern things, and he used nitrous oxide. Well, I'd never had it before. So it was weird because it made me go into this, almost like I was in a tunnel and everything kind of got like distant. And it kind of made me nervous that I was losing control, and I know a lot of folks are like that. So what I did is I would tap my finger to the music. That way I knew that I was still in control, per se. For whatever reason, that made me feel better. Now, does it really make people laugh? Well, uh, not necessarily, except let me tell you, my oldest son, when I put him on nitrous oxide a uh, long, long time ago, he started to laugh out loud, just like, you know, uh, Mary Poppins movie, just laughing and laughing and laughing. And I'm thinking, he's, <laughs> he's making this up, right? So I never said anything to him. And I re reached back and I turned it down a little bit. And nothing. He's still laughing, just still laughing away. And so I reached back and turned down the, the percentage a little bit more, and he's just laughing away. And I did this a couple more times, and when finally when I turned it down, he goes, he stopped laughing, and he goes, hey, what happened? And so I guess it was the nitrous oxide. And, you know, it just affects people differently. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> now, <coughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually swallow a fly, I just feel like I did. Um, now, another question I get is, well, if I'm on nitrous, why aren't you, the doctor, and you, the assistant, getting the effects of this? Why isn't everybody just all high by the end of the day, right, if we're using nitrous oxide in the office? Well, that's a very good question, but it has a very simple answer, which is, uh, and it's by law, by the way, we use an evacuation system, a system that um, basically it's tied to our suction uh, system, and it uh, siphons off the gas that the person isn't inhaling, and keeps it from filling the room. Okay, so that's a very good question. And does nitrous oxide have an odor? The answer to that is not really. Now, some people say it kind of does. I think they're just smelling the inside of the rubber mask that they're wearing over their nose, you know? And, um, and also, is it safe for children? And the answer is yes. We can um, use it on children as well. We might use a lesser percentage, you know? And what we like about nitrous is we can uh, titrate it up titrate it down. If we think that's not quite enough, we can turn it up and we can turn it down as needed. And so it really, really uh, is quite an adjunct, quite a benefit to being able to um, do some dentistry that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Okay. So, and by the way, um, do doctors, do physicians, here's another question, do physicians use nitrous oxide? Because I'm thinking they do procedures in the office that people maybe are a little nervous about. But as I, what I found was uh, it's one of the most common uses of nitrous oxide uh, for the medical world is in anesthesia is during mask induction of general anesthesia. So when they're getting ready to do uh, inhalation sedation of a general anesthetic nature, especially in pediatric patients, sometimes they will start with nitrous oxide. But I don't really know why they don't use it on more, more um, procedures. Seems like it'd be nice to have Let's say you're going to have to have a mole removed in the office or something that you thought was scary. And I, just, I don't really know the answer. I'll have to ask some of my doctor friends. Okay. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, there are three forms of sedation. Laughing gas or nitrous oxide oxygen. Also, uh, oral sedation where you're giving, given tablets to swallow. And then IV, conscious sedation or intravenous sedation. And so again, that's going to be important when we do... Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So pretty soon what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to oral sedation. It's something that I find uh, very helpful. Uh, and what I like about it, well, first of all, it just so happens that nitrous oxide sedation is less expensive than oral sedation. 
oral sedation is less expensive than intravenous sedation. And the reason is the requirements for education and continuing education to be able to do the various levels is more stringent. So, you know, a dentist can do laughing gas or nitrous oxide sedation with no extra training beyond dental school. A dentist can also do oral sedation with no additional training beyond dental school, except if they don't have an IV sedation permit, then they can only give you one dose of the oral medication and will have to and hope to see, hope that it works basically. So if they've chosen wrong, maybe it's not enough. Well, so the question would be, what if I, um, what if I've been given oral sedation tablets, but I don't get sleepy? Well, in my office, I'm allowed to give you a little more. In an office without the IV sedation certification, they're not. And you can't cheat the system by saying, take this at home before you come, or you know that sort of thing. And some offices do, and I think they're taking a chance there. But um, but anyway. So as I mentioned, we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. I think we're going to do that here in a second. Uh, but before we do, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, and remember, you're going to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The question of the day is, today we're talking about sedation options in the dental office. There are three basic categories. What are they? A, nitrous oxide oxygen. B, oral sedation. C, intravenous sedation. Or D, all of the above. All right? The winner's going to receive those free flowers. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here and he's gonna help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He could put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have four callers on the phone. We have Karen, Sarah, Linda, and Anthony. And we flipped the coin during the break, and it came up Anthony. Hey, Anthony, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for listening and for calling in. Do you have the answer? Uh, D, all of the above. Yes, that is correct. Anthony, what do you do for a living? Um, well, I am a machine operator. Cool. I used to be, uh, my dad was a machine operator, and I used, he sh showed me how to do a little bit of ID and OD grinding. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I do... Um, I do plastic extrusion. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hey, we need so many people like yourself. We really need the, the skilled trades, wouldn't you say? 
I, I fully agree with you. Yeah, he was a tool and die maker. worked at Chrysler, but he had this little part-time job on the side and brought me there to teach me. And we were doing aircraft landing gear. And he'd do one in like five minutes. And I think I spent all night just doing one because I was afraid to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Our little shop, we're uh, completely self-sufficient. We have all our tool and die, everything right there in the shop. And we make all of our tools. What's the name of the place? Um, engineered Profiles. It used to be Crane Plastics. Oh, cool. we are actually We are actually responsible for making the hula hoop. I'll be darned. You know what, Anthony? I'm going to have your phone number here in a minute and your address because we're going to find out how to get those flowers to you. But I may give you a call and see about coming out and taking a little tour. That would be fantastic. We could work that out. Okay. Sounds good. Well, stay on the line because we have to get that info. And thanks for calling. And maybe we'll meet here soon. Sounds great. Okay. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Well, there. Okay. So thanks so much for the others for calling. And please call back next week. Let me give this back to my producer so he has the names. There we go. And so, yeah, we're talking about sedation dentistry, laughing gas, oral sedation, and IV sedation. And remember, some people make a fourth category where you combine the two, the, the laughing gas and oral sedation. And by the way, I do that a lot. I combine those two uh, because, again, as I have, if I give you something to swallow, then you're going to have a finite amount in your system. It's going to be at its highest level in about 15 minutes. Uh, but then, from that point, it's going to start to dissipate. Well, if I have a long appointment, and as it starts to dissipate, I might um, turn up the nitrous oxide. So I can keep you at that same level throughout the entire visit. Okay? So, but, but the, again, you know, uh, and, and you know what? So I get a lot of questions about this too. So is there a one-size-fits-all dosage for oral sedation? The, absolute, the answer is absolutely not. Um, we definitely have to titrate it, um, cater it to each individual. You'd be amazed, though. It's not always... The big, uh, the big burly guy gets more than the tiny little woman. Oftentimes, it's the reverse. Somebody that's really tiny, like really thin, um, they're thin because they have a very high metabolism in, in a lot of instances. And so they, they, uh, they need more drugs sometimes than the 300-pound linebacker. But you can't just assume the 300-pound linebacker is going to need a ton either. You know, you have to kind of go by their past history. I will tell you, if somebody has used recreational drugs, it takes more uh, for me to get you sedated. Also, uh, I get this question, what if I can't, what if I want oral sedation, but I can't swallow pills? Well, guess what? Got you on that one, too. I keep on hand liquid versions of the medications. <laughs> I think that's smart, right? I don't go through it that often, and I always have to, every year I buy new because it, it expires. But if you can't swallow pills, but you think oral sedation is a, uh, something you'd like to do, I can do it at the office. Um, also... Um, I think I already answered how long it takes for oral, oral tablets to work. Typically what I'll do is I'll give somebody the, uh, the pills, I wait 15 minutes, then I bring them back to the treatment room and I start the laughing gas, start the nitrous oxide oxygen. And in about 15 more minutes, they're pretty much there. Now I like to call uh, the, the nitrous oxide, the laughing gas, I like to call that, um, the effect is a little bit like having had a couple of beers if you're a beer drinker or a couple of glasses of wine if you're a wine drinker. And if you're neither like me, you just feel like a buzz, <laughs> a little bit out of it. And uh, oral sedation, and especially when I mix it with the laughing gas, I consider that, or I call that, um, la-la land. I've put you in la-la land, meaning you're just very happy. Everything makes you smile. Nothing seems to bother you at that, at that moment. And so um, I think it's a really good state to be in. And while I was researching this show, I'm sorry, information to bring you for this show, I came upon a quote. And I think it's really cool. I don't, it didn't mention whose quote it is. I'd love to give credit to whomever came up with it. And, but I'm telling you it's not mine, but it might be my new mantra. And it's something to the effect of, let me see if I can actually find it rather than having to paraphrase. But it was, uh, and, I, and I really think it's, it's a cool way to look at it. Uh, let's see, where is it, where is it? Well, I might have to paraphrase because I'm taking too long. Okay, so it's like, something like, instead of, simply dreaming about a beautiful smile? How about dreaming while you're getting a beautiful smile? Isn't that, isn't that good? Because that's what I feel like I do. I do a lot of my smile makeovers using sedation. Uh, anywhere from, uh, the makeovers oftentimes are at least the oral mix with the laughing gas, but oftentimes they are also the IV sedation. So now here's another question I get. Are there certain procedures that I should consider using oral sedation? Well, the answer to that is, yeah, anything that scares you. So, um, 
if that means an extraction is scary, or having an implant placed is scary, or a root canal is scary, or be honest, some people they're just afraid to come to the office. So that's scary. And so, you know, somebody said, can I ask to be sedated for simple dental teeth cleaning appointments? And I was like, yeah. If, that, if you find that scary and you're not going to have those, if you don't get some form of sedation, well, it's a lot healthier to be sedated and have your teeth cleaned on a regular basis and have your teeth fixed on a regular basis and be healthy your whole life than it would be to just stay away because you're like too embarrassed to ask to be sedated for something simple like a dental cleaning. And by the way, you can be IV sedated for something simple like a dental cleaning. And I do have people that do that. I also have, you know what, I also get this question which is, uh, how soon can I drive after being sedated? And you know what? I'm looking at the clock and it looks like it's time to go to a break. So we're going to hold the answer to that one till after we come back. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile, episode number 526. We're talking about office, dental office sedation, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am. Die just a little bit. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Greigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. It's episode number 526. We're bringing you dental office sedation options, when to pick one over the other, and what's the best choice for you. So before the break, uh, we were talking about um, how soon can you drive after being sedated, which is kind of like a follow-up to a question I had not yet uh, mentioned I receive, which is, if I'm sedated intravenously for dental care, how long afterwards will I be sleepy? Well, that depends on what medicine I use. And so, you know, especially with IV, there's this medication called Versed, um, midazolam, which I can use, and that is actually short-acting. By the time the procedure's over, you're feeling like you weren't even under the, uh, the uh, you know, under the, the spell, so to speak. But, <coughs> but I tend to do longer appointments, and I kind of want people, and a lot of the appointments do involve root canals and extractions and that sort of thing. So I kind of want people to go home and sleep because what's the best way to heal from anything, whether it's uh, trying to get over the flu or uh, some other injury, uh, is sleep, right? Our body can regenerate the most while we're asleep. So I actually use Valium IV mixed with Benadryl, which is an antihistamine, which potentiates the, uh, the effects of the other. And then I typically use a lot of it unless they're, you're allergic to it and then I would use Demerol. Now that's what I do for IV sedation. For oral sedation, I use Valium. Uh, always an anti-nausea drug, right? Usually, uh, um, <coughs> it's always in tablet form, except for those people that can't swallow tablets. It's a compazine, or you can use fenugrin. And anyway, I do that so people don't get nauseous. My wife is one of those people that gets nauseous every time she's sedated. And um, <coughs> so I have the... Uh, so in, if you have it, if I sedate you, you're going to go home, you're going to be sleepy for hours. And I want it that way. Go home, sleep it off, get healthy. Okay? Now, but it doesn't matter what I've given you. The law is, if you've been sedated, you can't drive until tomorrow. Period. If you drive before tomorrow, 
and you get picked up for DUI, driving under the influence, you're going to face all the same penalties and punishments that you would have if you'd purposely um, gone out and gotten drunk and didn't use an Uber to get home or something. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, I can't, um, can't seem to get that out of my throat. But anyway, yeah, so um, you can't drive till the next day is the answer. And if you're sedated by me, you're probably going to just be sleepy uh, to go home and rest and relax. And, uh, but even if you go to an office where they use the verse head, you really shouldn't be driving uh, and you shouldn't be trying to function because you're not going to realize what you're doing. You're going to think you're fine and then tomorrow you're not going to remember it. You can remember what you did. And if you did something like with your business, did something important, you might not remember you just sold the company <laughs> or you just hired 13 employees on one day. <coughs> okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about the IV sedation and the licensure and things. Okay, so to be licensed to do IV sedation, um, it takes about 40 to 60 hours of didactic coursework and between 40 to 60 hours of clinical work with patients. And uh, typically, once a person has completed those requirements, they, are, they still need to complete supervised treatment on more than uh, 20 patients. That's how you become IV sedation certified. So it's not an easy process. Uh, it does take a good bit. It's gotten harder and harder to become sedated or certified in IV sedation because uh, there aren't as many programs available out there for people to take. And in a lot of cases, it requires that uh, the dentist close their office and go to, say, Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or someplace, you know, maybe out in California or Florida. There just don't, doesn't seem to be a lot of options, especially right here in Ohio. Uh, dental students at OSU are able to obtain training. They, if they take an elective and they <coughs> do the coursework, they can oftentimes graduate being IV sedation certified. But if they don't graduate, uh, there used to be one in, uh, in the Dayton area. I'm sorry, if they don't graduate with, uh, with the certification, then they have to find it on their own. There used to be one in the Dayton area, but that gentleman retired, so it's gotten harder and harder. And so it's harder to find a dentist that can do this, and I can promise you there are people that can't have their dental care without it. Now, when it comes to pediatric patients, I typically use oral night laughing gas and oral sedation on them. I don't use IV sedation on kids. Um, if they're a management issue, it feels like it would be hard to get them to sit still to start an IV for one. Also, you would need the, the t you know, tiny little needles for another, and um, they just have, um, there's so many more uh, what ifs, because you know, with an adult, they can tell you what you're allergic to, what, what they're allergic to. With a child, they're too young to know. They haven't been given enough medications. But here in uh, Columbus, we're very fortunate. We have Children's Hospital, and so they have a program where people can become, uh, you can bring your child there, and they can sedate them for you intravenously. So we are coming up upon the end of the show, and I hope you found it uh, interesting. Let me just recap that you can have laughing gas, which is nitrous oxide oxygen sedation. You can have oral sedation, which is a mixture of uh, different pills that I use. I might use a mixture of pain pills, Valium, and uh, Compazine, and then uh, IV, and then I would potentially use both. You know, that's that other mixture that uh, we said might be the fourth category, where we do laughing gas and oral sedation. And then the last thing that I would do would be intravenous sedation. And it works great, folks, and it helps me do a lot of great things for a lot of people. And maybe you'll become one of them. Okay, <clears throat> well, looks like that's all the time we have. Remember, I am looking for another dentist, so please call my office at 614-262-9588. And you can send me an email to bkvitko at AOL.com. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and follow me uh, go to my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And we have been streaming live on Facebook, so you might be able to find those videos at well, as well if you go to our Facebook page. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko.
If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 262 